Another th- cool thing you can do on Fedora and other distributions, but it's it's easy to do on Fedora, is install Cockpit um, to get a cool um, web console view of what's happening in your Kubernetes cluster. So if you haven't seen my previous video about installing a Kubernetes all-in-one, you might want to look at that first. That's where this video picks up. So right now I'm on uh, my Kubernetes all-in-one machine here. And what I'm, I'm just going to install Cockpit and uh, show you how to get uh, so the, get it up and running so that you can get kind of a visual uh, picture of what's happening in Kubernetes when uh, you do different command line things. So uh, I'm going to install Cockpit, and there is a separate package called Cockpit Kubernetes, which contains the Kubernetes dashboard for Cockpit. We're just going to install them both right here together. All right, so now um, let's go ahead and, and enable the, um, we're gonna do system control enable and now, which also starts it, uh, the cockpit, uh, cockpit socket. All right, uh, one of the things we need to do is that this is a Fedora 24 cloud install and by default, uh, there's no password, password authentication is disabled for SSH and Cockpit, even, even connecting over localhost uses SSH. And so there's two things we need to do. We need to set the password for the Fedora user, which is the default cloud user. And we need to enable password authentication for SSH. So uh, setting the password for the Fedora user is simple. Let's do that. And then uh, for the SSH configuration, this is the path, it's Etsy SSH. SSHD underscore config and search for password. You can see that password authentication is set to no. Just comment that out and uncomment that one. And then we're going to restart the SSHD service. So system control restart SSHD. Okay. So now I'm going to go to a browser here and uh, type in the IP address of my node there uh, cockpit runs on port 9090 so if you hit that uh, it uses a self-signed cert by default and so you're going to get you know you get this uh, invalid certificate authority um, but you know, it's okay and it brings you up to this um, this is where we sign in as fedora and we use the password that we just set and now we're in the uh, cockpit environment and if you haven't seen this uh web UI, it is uh, pretty slick as far as managing your system. There are other cockpit uh, controls like storage and uh, the cockpit uh, Docker uh, dashboard, which can give you even more information. You can configure network storage, uh, look at your uh, Docker attributes and everything like that. But the Kubernetes dashboard is under here under cluster. And so we can see here that uh, we have one pod running. This was actually from my previous demo. It's still running. Um, and we have one node localhost, and that's the, the all-in-one install that we did before. If we go to nodes, we can see uh, information like the CPU load, memory, and disk loads of all of our nodes and what the OS versions of our nodes are. We can uh, see this is the demo container. If you saw my previous video, this is the container that's still running. You can expand this see the logs that that container isn't outputting anything to its uh, standard output. So, you know, nothing shows up here, but you can come right here and get a shell. You can actually browse around inside the container from the web UI. Uh, the topology shows you, you know, this pod is running on this. You can see lots of information about the pods here, uh, lots of information about the nodes. And uh, this is just a Kubernetes service that is always present. Um, but you can get all kinds of good information here, filter by project um, and persistent volumes, which I haven't covered yet, but they would show up here. So this is just a really cool way to, to get system, a system level view and control your system, but also get a Kubernetes level view. Um, so I think it's really cool. So uh, this is how, that's how you can check it out.